We're ready to worship. Stand with me, if you will, this morning. Great are you, Lord. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. You Great in love. 
pray. God, we thank you today that you are the one that we can look to. You have been with us since the beginning of creation. And we recognize that you are the one who helps us in all things. God, help us today to recognize that you are the one who leads us, directs us into all truth. And we ask that today that we, have an we will take this opportunity to focus upon you, the author and perfecter of our faith. God, we know that there are lots of things that have happened in our, in our world since last week. Our kids have gone back to school. Teachers have begun trying to teach in, a, in an environment that sometimes is not always conducive and fun to teach in. So God, we know the challenges that our students and teachers and our administrators are facing as we deal with this COVID-19 pandemic. God, we know parents are trying to navigate, what do we do with our kids? How do we do this or do that? What should we do? What's the safe thing to do? So God, we know that there are lots of things that are facing our families today. So God, we ask that you will give us wisdom. We're asking for your protection. For God, we recognize that you are the one who can do all things, and we want to acknowledge that and proclaim that you can do all things. So, God, we're asking for you to do what seems impossible, but we know that you can do it. God, we thank you for life. Life that, life that we've seen come in the form of laughter from children. We thank you for the for life that we've seen, even for people who are maybe on, on death's door, but how that you still allow them to maybe connect to their family one last time. God, we know people have been facing some different diagnoses and, and cancer treatments and terminal uh, illness declarations. And God, you know all these things that, that people are facing. And so God, we ask that you will help with your presence. God, I, I pray for our college students as we know that this week and then a couple of the next several weeks that our students will be going back to school. So God, we want to lift them up to you and ask that you will help them as they navigate this unique start of a school year. God, help us to turn to you when we're uncertain, when we're not sure what the next step is, that you will give us wisdom, you'll help us. You'll let us know that we're not alone. God, for all the things that you do, we give you praise. May the praise be on our lips and thanksgiving in our hearts. For we pray these things all be done in the name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. You may be seated. couple questions for you. How many of you got to choose what you ate for breakfast today? Okay. How many of you got to choose what you wore to church today? I know some of you men probably did not. Uh, <laughs> How many of you um, get to choose if you love God? We do get those choices, don't we? Um, and some choices are easy. Like, do I want to wear the green shirt or do I want to wear the blue shirt? Right? That's a pretty easy choice. Easy choices. Do I want cereal for breakfast or do I want a Pop-Tart? Um, and I think it's even sometimes easy for us to choose, yes, I'm going to love God. But I think it's the choices that come after saying that we're going to love Jesus that are the hardest. What do you think? I think those are some of the hardest. Um, in a little bit, Pastor Danny is going to talk about the, the last section of Joshua that we've been talking about, um, and he's going to remind us of a verse from Joshua 24 
but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. So it's pretty easy to say, I'm going to serve God. But when it's time to serve God, that's when it gets a little bit hard, right? Um, so I have some questions here that I'm encouraging parents, and I put the first service. If you have somebody at home and you want to talk about this stuff with them, feel free to grab papers. I can make more copies. I have no problem doing that. Um, but this is something at home I want you to talk to your kiddos about. And kiddos, right now I just want you to think about a few of these, okay? So if we choose to serve God, what does that look like when I'm at school? What, what does it look like when you choose to serve God at school? And I just want you to think about that. I'm not going to give you an answer. What does it look like when we choose to serve God and someone is mean to us? I thought about, you know, even at the grocery store when the cashier is really grumpy as an adult, what do we look like if we've chosen to serve God to that cashier? Here's a really hard one. What does it look like if I choose to serve God and I've messed up and I've hurt somebody? I've made a mistake. I've done something that made somebody else cry. If I'm serving God, what does my behavior look like? Am I going to say I'm sorry? Am I going to own it? Or am I going to be mean and say it was all their fault? How am I going to serve God when I am with other people? So please, please take this home and look at it. And I also have back there a house. So you can color this part. And on this part, I want you to draw your family because I hope that your family is choosing to serve God, right? And we're going to choose to serve God in our house, but we're also going to choose to serve God everywhere else. And one more thing, quizzing is going to start for the children's quizzers. The cool thing is this year is if you're interested but you don't want to do the group thing, they have lots of online opportunities where you can practice. And if you want to quiz but you do not want to go to the quiz meets, we're going to have online options to do those quizzes. So maybe if you're shy and you've wanted to do it before, you're like, oh, I don't want to be around people, this might be the year you want to try it. Um, if you have any questions, you can catch me after church or shoot me an email, give me a call, and I'd be happy to pass on some information to you. And it's going to be on Exodus. Well, we're going to finish up our series today, Winning with God from Joshua, and we're going to be in Joshua chapter 24. And I want to share with you a clip from the movie Cheaper by the Dozen, starring Steve Martin and Helen Hunt. Tom and Kate Baker... Uh, have compromised their careers to raise 12 children. I can't even imagine. Uh, but Tom coaches a high school football team while Kate has retired from journalism to raise the family. Well, things change when Tom is offered a dream college coaching job in a new city at the same time that Kate's publisher is going to allow her to uh, publish this book that's a parenting memoir. After moving, Kate goes on this book tour, which means that Tom is in charge, and we all know that what happens when guys are in charge of the whole family, it just doesn't go so well, and there's some chaos that ensues, and the kids are unhappy because they've had to relocate, you know, try to find new friends, all these different things, and so there's been a lot of turmoil and frustration along the way, and so we're going to pick up the end of this film this morning and uh, just ca check this uh, clip out. Just like Tom, we are all faced with choices. Choices about our family. Choices about our career, employment. Choices about how we're going to live our lives. It's either going to be towards God or against God. Really, that's what it comes down to for us as Christians. Are we going to live for God or are we going to not live for God? Tom realizes that his family is extremely important. That raising his children is more important than chasing the dream of a dream college coaching job. He decides to follow a different dream. I encourage us to be thinking about what dream is, that, is God calling each one of us to. Ultimately, it's rooted in following after him. We're going to find in this final installment here today in Joshua 24, 
that we find the nation of Israel receiving its final instructions and warnings if they don't do what God requires of the people of Israel. If they're going to be a follower of their God, they're going to have to do certain things and live a certain way towards him. Joshua has been assigning the different groups their land. And so we're going to pick it up here in Joshua chapter 24. We're going to read verse 1. Um, so Joshua 24, beginning with verse 1. Then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summoned the elders, leaders, judges, and officials of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. You need to understand that they understood that this was a solemn assembly, that the focus of this assembly was to focus upon the God who had redeemed them, the God who had delivered them from slavery, the God who had delivered them from the land of Egypt and the desert, the one who had given them help along the way. So uh, Joshua reminds them of their winning tradition. Joshua reminds them of their winning tradition. If we read through the next several verses, down through verse 13, we're going to find things that like this, where Joshua reminds them that they are part of this tradition, this heritage of being part of the, the people of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham, who left his father and father's household and went to a land that God showed him, this promised land, the place they are now, and how God called him to be the father of this new nation called the Is- that we know now as the Israelites. And he was faithful to God, and, and God finally gave him a son, Isaac. And that was a blessing, and, and Isaac had two sons, Esau and Jacob. And Jacob was the one who received God's blessing. And his name was eventually changed to Israel. That's where they get the name Israelites from, Jacob. And, and they have to go to Egypt to spend over 400 years as strangers in a distant land. That's part of the promise that God made with Abram way back in Genesis 12. And, and Joshua reminds them of their history. He said, remember God, how God brought us out of Egypt? How God brought us out of Egypt and we walked on dry ground. Remember that we came to the place where God, God was with us in the desert. He was a cloud by day and pillar of fire by night. He was present. We didn't always make the right choices, but he was always faithful to us. He reminds them of the fact that God delivered them from the Amorites on the east side of the Jordan River. God delivered them from the Moabites and that they crossed the Jordan River on dry ground and had their first conquest at Jericho. And remember that Jericho, the walls came tumbling down. God had delivered the Israelites from all kinds of other ites, other groups, for God had delivered them and given them the opportunity to be victorious. It is God who delivers and provides over and over for his people. So Joshua reminds him of their winning tradition. Look, God has been with us. We've won time and time again because God has been with us. And then he gets to verse 14. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your forefathers worshiped beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. In other words, he reminds them that they have a choice. They are not forced to follow after God, but it, he's saying it's the most desirable way. But if it's not your cup of tea, it's not for you, then choose today whom you will serve. But Joshua makes his declaration, and he says, Oh, sorry, whether the gods your far farthest serve beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. In other words, whatever God has been, small g, whatever God has been here and you want to follow after that, then choose today whom you will serve. But he says, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. I don't care what you're going to do. You, you have to make that choice. It's not my choice for you. It's your choice. Children have choices. Parents have choices. We all have choices because we have been given free will. We can choose whether we want to go God's way or not God's way. Joshua is trying to remind the people that God's way is best. 
but you still have to choose. The choice will not be made for you. You have to choose yourself. So Joshua says, you know, look, I'm making a commitment to winning. I'm making a commitment to winning. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Joshua models that right response. He says, I don't care what you're going to do. This is what I'm doing. And he says, I'm going to wholeheartedly serve him. And if we look on Joshua's life, we can see how Joshua, you know, made a choice many, many years ago to follow after God. When, when others said, you know, God can't do what he says he can do when they went to spy on the land the first time. Joshua didn't buy into that. He saw just like the other one saw, but he didn't see with human eyes. He saw with God's eyes and said, we will be victorious. And over and over, Joshua chose God's way. And God was faithful to him, and God blessed Joshua. And he says, you know, I have seen the track record in my own life. And I know that God is who he says he is, and I know God will do what he says he will do. And because of that, I will continue to serve the Lord. He's old. You may say there's not much left in the tank, and there may not be. But he's still determined to follow the Lord. You see, commitment to winning is a choice. We all have a choice. Do we want to commit to God's way or do we commit to something other than God's way? You can get sucked into other things. When he says, you know, you can choose this God or that God, look, we're, we're in an environment where we can get sucked in to other ideologies, other philosophies, other ways of living that may not line themselves up with God's way. And I can tell you that when we make a choice, we've made a choice. But sometimes that choice isn't always going to lead us to life. If it's not the Jesus way, it won't lead us to to life. So let's go on. First, uh, picking up with verse 16. Then the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us and our family and our fathers up out of Egypt from the land of slavery and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey and among all the nations through which we traveled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites. Remember, this is like their rival nemesis. I mean, if you're going to talk about the group that just gets under your skin, it's the Amorites. It says, but God delivered us from them who lived in the land. We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. Joshua said to the people, you are not able to serve the Lord. He says, look, you can't just give it lip service. You can't just say, we're going to do this. Because God is a holy God. He is a jealous God. There will be no other gods before him. There will not be anything before him. He is the one true and living God, and don't try to mess with him. You can't have one foot in, one foot out. You can't choose to have a little bit of Jesus and a little bit of not Jesus. It doesn't work that way. He will not forgive your rebellion and your sins. You don't have the ability to do this with just some lip service. You're going to have to put some traction to it. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, he will turn and bring disaster on you and make an end of you after he has been good to you. Remember, he's been good, but you, you make the wrong choice. There are consequences to your action. But the people said to Joshua, no, we will serve the Lord. They're still making this declaration. Then Joshua said, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen to serve the Lord. In other words, if you're going to make this verbal declaration, there is responsibility to that statement. You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, we are witnesses, they replied. Now then, said Joshua, throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, we will serve the Lord our God and obey him. On that day, Joshua made a covenant for the people, and there at Shechem he drew up for them the decrees and laws. In other words, there were some very specific things that they were going to do to say, this is how we're going to serve the Lord. This is how we're going to live this relationship out. 
And Joshua recorded these things in the book of the law of God. Then he took a large stone and set it up there under the oak near the holy place of God. It's always important that there was some kind of memorial, some kind of way of reminding them of that moment. You know, one of the reasons we have memorials and things like that is to remind us of an event or a place or a, or a commitment. Verse 27, see, he said to all the people, this stone will be a witness against you. It was heard, it has heard all the words the Lord has said to us. It will be a witness against you if you are untrue to your God. You see, winning is a responsibility. Winning is a responsibility. You can't just say, I'm going to choose to follow Jesus. We could have a pep rally. Lots of people say, I'm for Jesus. I'm for Jesus. We go to concerts. We love the, the experience. But the reality is this. You can't just say, I, I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going to be a follower of Jesus and simply give it verbal lip service. It's about whether or not we're living that out with our lives. It requires action and constant refinement. I want you to know that God has given us the Holy Spirit. God has given us the Holy Spirit to help be guardrails, to keep us on the right path. There are times we, we kind of get off, off course a little bit. It doesn't take much. We've seen people drive down the road. They hit the rumble strips. And we're reminded, hey, you're not in the right place. And it's important that the Holy Spirit is there to help us to say, whoa, pay attention, let's fix it. And the Holy Spirit is there because, why is the Holy Spirit there? Because God wants to see us win. Look, even though he may say, you're getting off track, he's trying to lead us back in the right place. He knows that our default setting doesn't always choose the right thing. But the Holy Spirit wants to see us win and help us in our times of struggle. Winning with God calls us to forsake that which is not part of God's rules and God's ways. Look, there's lots of things that God says, do this and do that. And sometimes we're doing the right thing. But let's be honest, sometimes we make the wrong choices. But God wants to help us, even when we make wrong choices. When we confess our sins, he forgives us. He wants us to come to him and say, here's where I'm struggling. Here's what I'm having a hard time with. This is what I need help with. You see, winning is a responsibility. We must respond to what God is doing in our lives. There's a responsibility to God's grace. We must respond to his grace. And when we do so, he helps us in our times of weakness. He helps us when we struggle. Because, but he ultimately wants to see us win. So what's the big deal here? Choosing to win requires constant recommitment. Choosing to win requires constant recommitment. You know, we've seen people make commitments over the years. Marriage commitments. Commitment to a job. Commitment to family. All different things, right? And we could say, well, you made that decision at X period of time. But if that was the only time you ever made that commitment, it probably wouldn't wait, be very good, would it? Because it needs to be refreshed. It be, needs to be renewed. If you told your spouse that you loved them one time and said that's enough, would that be enough? No. It's about re constant recommitment. So I want to give you a verse to remind us of this recommitment, freshness that God wants to do within us. It comes from Luke 9, 23 and 24. Then Jesus said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. We must deny ourselves, take up our cross daily. It's a daily commitment. It's a fresh commitment. It is a right now commitment to follow Jesus. If every morning we got up and said, Jesus, I'm going to follow you today. Jesus, today I choose to follow you. And we did that two, three times a day. I'm choosing to still follow you. Jesus, I'm, I want to follow you. Help me do the right thing. That's a fresh right now experience, isn't it? Romans 8 reminds us the fact that when the Spirit affirms what's happening within us, that we're doing the right thing, we are affirmed 
or given that assurance that we are God's child. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, Romans 8.1. So we must take up our cross daily and follow me. Whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. In other words, when you place your trust in me, I will get you there. I will allow you to win. The Holy Spirit is like a coach. They're trying to say, this is how you're going to do it. Here's the place where you're struggling. Here's the place where, you know, the, team, the other team is going to get the upper hand on you if you don't do this. And when we're talking about the other team, I'm talking about Satan and how he wants to see you lose. But Jesus wants to see you what? Win. So what are some things that I would tell you? Some next steps. This, two, just two things. Where do, you, where do we need to recommit to winning? Where do we need to recommit to winning? It maybe is just that holistic, you know, I need to follow after Jesus. I need to take that first step. Or I need to recommit my, my commitment to Jesus. I need to say, you know what, if I'm going to live my life towards him, I must do this. I'm not sure where all of you sit today. Only God knows. But I can tell you this. He'll help you with this question. The second one is this. In our own lives, where does God want us to win in an area where we are failing? Look, we all know those moments where we know we're failing, we're struggling. We see ourselves fail because of sin. We see ourselves fail because of choices. So what do we need to ask God to redeem in our life? To work more so within us. The good news is that Jesus through the Holy Spirit, can help us when we struggle. But we've got to give God those things. And when we do, he will help us. Let me pray with you this morning. God, we thank you today that you help us in our times of weakness, our struggles. Help us today to make the choices that will reflect you in our lives. Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, um, would you pray for me? I need to take that first step. I need to, to say, I want to follow Jesus and not just give it lip service, but really start to put some commitment behind it. And I'd like you to pray for me. If that describes you, would you raise your hand? I'd love to pray for you today. If that's your prayer, just something like this. Dear Jesus, I can't do it on my own, but I'm going to commit my way to you. And I'm asking you to help me because I want you to be the leader of my life rather than myself. Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, I, I need some help. Would you just pray for me? Would you just pray for me as I go through life, as I do, do different things? I just need someone to pray for me in these days. Would you raise your hand? I would love to remember you in prayer this week. Yeah. Yeah. God, you know what each person is here needs today. God, help us to build our life upon you. For we pray these things in your name. Amen. If you will, join us in the singing of this song. To close our service, Build My Life.
live for you. Thank you today for your love and your strength, your beauty. God, help us to be living sacrifices, living our lives toward you in such a way that we reflect the fact that we are ones who are choosing to follow you. God, help us to do that in our homes, in our work, at school. And any other capacity that we are living out life in this world, that we will be people who reflect you. For we pray these things in the name of Jesus and all God's people said, amen. Thanks for being here today. We look forward to seeing you soon.